Hey guys, welcome to the 25th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use inheritance. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and a class with a few members inside of it. Now all the members inside of this class are public. We have a string name, which is equal to Bob. We have an integer age, which is equal to 10. And we have this void right here, where it will display a message box to the user. Now, say we wanted to create another class that had that has all the same members as um, this my class right here. Well, well, we we could just copy and paste all this code right here and paste it into this class. But there's an easier way. We can do something called inheritance. And what inheritance will do is it will take all the non-private members from this class and allow you to use them inside of this class. So, if we, in order to inherit, you're just going to put a colon after, the after this class, and then type the name of the class that you want to inherit from. And we're going to inherit from my class. So now, all the members inside of this class that aren't private are now in this class as well. So, if we were to create a new instance of my second class, we would, as you can see, there are now all the members that weren't private inside of this class are now in this class as well. So we have this age, name, and show message. Now you can also add members to this class. You don't have to just stick with the members that were already in this class. For example, if you wanted to just let's say you wanted to create another um, string right here call it hair color, set that equal to brown. Now all of these will have all of these members and this member inside of this class. So do MSC, we now have hair color, and we also have the original one. We have age, name, and show message. But we cannot inherit members that are private. For example, if we were to make this string name private, then we wouldn't be able to inherit it. Or yeah, inherit from it. So we wouldn't be able to do my second class dot um, name because it's private. Now inside of this class, we can use all of these um, public members. For example, if we wanted to do, we'll create a new method here, which will, um, I guess, just display another message box. Message box special special message box. And what we can do here is we can now access all the non-private members in this class. So if we wanted to have a message, oops, system show. If we wanted to access this integer age right here, we could. We could do base dot and then age because the base keyword will access the base class. And this is here. This right here is called the base class. And then the class that um, you, that is inheriting from a class is called the derived class. So this is this class is derived from this base class right here. So we can use the keyword base to access all of the non-private members inside of this class. So we could now have a message box display the age um, inside of this uh, uh, method inside of this class right here. So we have to make this public so we can now use it outside. Now if you msc dot message box special, and we should get a message box that says 10 because we're using um, this uh, age right here, and we're displaying it in a message box. Yep. And you can inherit, and you can do base dot with any um, thing that's not private. Like we could do um, instead of doing this, we could do base dot show message we can use we can um, uh, access methods as well not only variables so we could just display that base now dot age dot to string and this will be the exact same thing yep something else that you can do is say you want to make it so you can only access these members inside of this derived class, but you don't want to make it so you can access these members outside of the, outside of um, this class and this class. 
what you can do is you can use an access modifier called protected. So if we put protected on both of these, we can still now access them from this derived class right here by doing base.showMessage and base.age, but we cannot access them outside of either one of these classes. So if we were to try to go out here and do msc dot and then our show message, we'll get an error. So if I try to do show message, it will say that if I can get this message, so it is inaccessible due to its protection level. So that just means that since this is protected, we can only access this the, this method and this uh, variable inside of the class it's created in and inside of the class that is derived from it. And say you want to like replace this method with something that is very similar to it. So say we want to um, have this uh, show message method um, display uh, a proper or a, a title to the message box. Well, what we could do is we could do public and then type new void show message. And basically what this will do is it will replace this void that is inherited. So if we were to make this public again, oops, public. All right, if we were to make this public again, we would, this right here, this method would overwrite this method right here. So we could have a message box be displayed in here, and we could change it up. We can make it do something different. Like we'll have it display a title as well. So let's call it my title, I guess. So now, when we do my second class, it will go to this method instead of this method because we use the keyword new, so it knows to go to this method instead of this method. So if we could do msc.showMessage and we type in um, a message, let's call it message right there, our message box should now have a title because we replaced the original method with a new one. Yep. And this is useful if you cannot access this class. For example, if this is inside of like a DLL or something. And something else you can do is use the override keyword. Um, and in order to use the override keyword, this method must be virtual. So we have to make it virtual. And then we can do something called override, where we just type keyword override right here. And that will do the same thing as doing the new void or whatever. I'm going to have to make this public as well. So this should do the exact same thing as before. That's just an alternate way of doing it. Oh. Alright, so that's pretty much all there is on inheritance. So that's all for this tutorial. So see you guys.